Recently, Chapter Master Varak did a video talking about whether the return of the Primarchs to Warhammer 40k was a good thing and asked for responses, and Discourse Miniatures responded to him. And you know what? I think they've both got some good points. I'm going to link their videos down below. But I have to say that I don't think either of them went anywhere near far enough because Varak was in favour, Discourse was not in favour. But if you ask me, all of the Primarchs should have been killed during the Horus Heresy. That might be my favourite thing I've ever said just before putting the intro in, and I would put money on the fact that this video, when it comes to the engagement, the viewer engagement graph in the analytics for YouTube, there is going to be a severe jump off a cliff into the depths of the sea right after I made that comment. It's going to be bad, but you know what? It was totally worth it. The problem, of course, now is that I kind of have to justify that comment, even though, I'm not going to lie, Mostly it was made to be uh, hyperbolic and a contrary little shit is what I was going for. But now I feel like I actually have to try and come up with a good reason as to why I would say that to begin with, even though I don't really fully agree with it. Um, okay, let's see if we can workshop this out without being too mean about the Primarchs themselves, or indeed the arguments presented by both Valrak and Discourse. Although, frankly, I didn't have anything in terms of arguing against either of them I just thought that would be a funny thing to say. So, let's see what we can do. This is going to be like that video where we looked at the Ultramarines heads and it just turned into trying to like deconstruct what it means to make videos on YouTube. I feel like, right, the Primarchs. Important figures in the Imperium. Of course, the Horus Heresy is the foundation for Warhammer 40k. It's what led to the galaxy being the way it is. It's what led to the Imperium being the fractured, shattered, crumbling, slowly decaying mess that it is. They are entirely responsible for the breakup of humanity and the slow descent into death, chaos and destruction. It's really a story of how one dysfunctional family with a terrible father figure couldn't stop being shitty to each other. And frankly, I think that's something that many of us can relate to. I say that, I'm an only child. I do think there is something to be said for there being more mystery around the Primarchs. I think the fact that they disappeared but didn't die did leave the door open for there to be a great number of interesting stories told about their absence and the fact that they decided to do what they did. In the case of quite a few of the Loyalist Primarchs, we had them just disappear. They just vanished off into the Eye of Terror. They decided that they wanted to go after Chaos at the source, and I can kind of see that, although I would also argue that they would hopefully be intelligent enough to know that in the aftermath of that civil war, they would be needed to reinforce the Imperium and make sure that it didn't completely collapse, which frankly, running off on a little personal revenge mission... That doesn't really get that done. Similarly, the Demon Primarchs have even more of an illogical method for continuing their existence because they were granted power by the Chaos Gods, and they failed, and so they retreated, and in some cases did kind of nothing. I know we've got a little bit of background as to what Mortarion was up to, uh, if I remember correctly, chasing his father's soul through the warp like some sort of bizarre reverse Scooby-Doo where the gang is chasing a ghost through endless corridors. In the case of Lorgar, I... Praying? Just praying, I think. Did he open a portal once? Maybe twice? Angron got a bit more done, to be fair, although there was also quite a bit of self-interest going on there as well. I'm pretty sure that Games Workshop initially didn't intend for the Primarchs to return, and so their reasons for leaving didn't need to be all that well thought out. It needed to be chaos at the back end of a horrendous civil war, and so it was just... And they left! But of course the problem with and they left is that it's completely open and they can come back at any time, which means the longer they wait to come back, the weirder that gap becomes. The more time they spend doing nothing or fighting inconsequential wars that mean nothing to the overall health of the empire that they had set out to destroy or usurp in the first place, it just means that they don't make all that much sense in terms of their actions or why they decide to wait as long as they do. When it comes to the machinations of, say, Abaddon and trying to form another crusade, that is limited by the fact that he is who he is. He is not a demon Primarch. He is not someone who has as much standing or power as those particular demigod figures, but he still managed to get more done than all of them, which means that when they do return, it kind of feels like they just felt like it, as opposed to it being a big, big event that was 
planned for some reason or other. That's not to say the reasons for them returning when they do are bad, just that they need to be really, really good to justify why they're away for so long to begin with. And of course, that problem goes away if they're all dead. If they're all gone, if it was such a horrific, awful conflict that these demigod figures, these extremely powerful, like, leaders of the Imperium all got wiped out by each other, or by Space Marines having these incredible acts of kind of self-destruction, hunting down Primarchs and killing them despite knowing that the entire army would fall in the process. That makes the fall of the Imperium that much more tragic, to me at least. It means that these figures tried. They didn't just try, they all failed. Everyone failed to such a final degree that these mythical beings are now lost. They're gone. It makes the grim dark nature of this universe so much worse because half of the best and brightest turned traitor threw away everything that they and their family had worked for and plunged humanity into a horrific slow decline and they didn't even get to see the end result of it because in the process of trying to undo everything they'd done, they undid themselves as well. I mean, surely that's got to count as a great tale of, like, hubris and arrogance, and the idea that one could be destined to do anything in a universe that doesn't care for destiny at all. And I'll be honest, that's pretty much all I've got. I can't really think of anything else to support the fairly over-the-top statement that I made initially, so I'm afraid that's going to have to be a lot. And if that didn't convince you, then, I mean, frankly, frankly... I'm not surprised. I'm really not. Anyway, go and watch the other two videos. They're better than this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sure the comments will be an absolute shit show, <laughs> but I'm sure it's fine. Feel free to click all the things. Patreon videos, all that stuff. Click it. Subscribe if you want. That's fine too. That'd be good. And uh, there's an affiliate link for Element Games as well. You can click that too if you like. It's entirely up to you. I'll leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.